Hello, everybody. I am Teddy Jenkins, and welcome to the Nerdly Gentleman Podcast. With me is a special guest, George. Say hi, George. Hello, everybody. George the Nerd here. Awesome job. You can find me at youtube.com slash exploratory gamers because that was my former YouTube channel, or just look up George the Nerd. By the way, will you share this video once it's made? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm also, I'm also, like, what? Well, you know the, the stuffs, the the <laughs> the ways that you can spread influence. Since you know, I'm basically just giving you free promotion. <laughs> yeah, so I can, I can share. It. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I'm a part of it, but my link can better be in the description. Yep, yep, yep. It will be. I promise. Um. Okay. So a bunch of stuffs happened. I haven't made a podcast in a little while, and I should have, but I was busy with stuff. So now. Um, a whole lot of stuff actually happened, so I'm trying to think. A bunch of game shows came out for Dawn of War 3, the Warhammer, Dawn of War 3 came, trailer for that came out, the Civilization 6 trailer came out, um, what was the other one? Um, oh yeah, the new Battlefield game trailer came out, Battlefield 1. My opinions on those because um, yeah. I don't want to. I would, and I, because I don't want to waste the. Well, let me let me hear your thoughts. Did you did you watch any of the trailers? Uh, I seen the uh, Infinite Warfare and Battlefield One and oh, everything yes. with. I forgot about Battlefield. Rip I forgot about Infinite, Infinite War, Warfare. Go ahead and share your uh, thoughts I on think, those. I think Call of Duty's one is a little bit stupid because you're like, and Advanced Warfare. People didn't like that one because it was kind of futuristic. You didn't take any feedback whatsoever. You just kept on doing what you wanted to do. Yeah, I, here's the thing. Okay, I do. You know, like, I do. Like, I gotta say, I'm proud of them for taking at least a step towards. Okay, let's just make this totally weird, and let's take this totally out of the the realm of normal Call of Duty. You know, no more advanced. No more just like. I was about to say, no more warfare, but it's, it's, it does warfare in the title. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, there's there, it, it's, it's been so straightforward for so many years, which is why I stopped playing Call of Duty. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think about the new stuff in it? Uh, I thought I said I didn't like the Call of Duty one because it's too futuristic. Because, like, you have guns with bullets, but yet you have ships that fly, like, outer space. Yeah. As far as I saw. It's yeah. Like, well, well, there, not there was that part there where that guy was weapons? in in this is the zero gravity outside and he like grapple hooked a guy and killed him. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But why don't we have like laser weapons? That is also a very good point. Why is there no Star Wars Call of Duty? Call of Duty Star Wars. Oh right, it's called Battlefront and they messed that up. Um Oh god, don't even get me started on Battlefront. <laughs> Dude, People okay, say I, I right, love that game. So, okay. I, I don't like it. Okay, I own that on PlayStation in my basement right now. Um, I do too. And not my basement though. And I mostly play like the 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 local uh, multiplayer battle modes and stuff like that with like friends and family and stuff like that. Um, it even in that it was disappointing. That whole game. This is going to be quick. I don't want to get too deep into this. But that whole game was really a disappointment. Because like, okay, like you, I'm going to assume that like you, you played Battlefront 2 and maybe some 1. Battlefront uh, 1 and Battlefront when, 2. Okay, when did you when did you play those? Did you play those as a kid or later on? I played those as a little kid. Okay, I had the same five experience. Year old. I had the same experience, right? I grew up playing video games with my older sister and we would constantly play the the Galactic Conquest mode. And dude, that was I did that my cousin. That was my childhood. Okay, I loved that so much. Everything Although about he my didn't childhood. Like versing me. Oh yeah, yeah. Because because okay. So what is interesting? My evolution in video games. Early on, my older sister could beat me all the time. Because you know, I was like, I don't even know, like five, six, something. You know pretty young anyway but then as i got older i could just beat her all the time and then i did 
And so, but it, it, and then of course, you know, they're like, I don't want to play anymore with you because you just win all the time. <laughs> um, he was, he's like these two things. One, I don't want to verse you because you'll kick my face in. Yeah. Second of all, we are not doing space battles because every time we get in a plane with you, you, you make me sick. Oh my gosh, dude. Okay. My older sister was horrible at space battles, but I was good. So every time it was a guaranteed win for me. Um, but okay, I'm sorry. Battlefront Two has got to have Galactic Conquest, mandatory. All right, it, it. I mean, it just has to happen. Okay, I can't accept them doing it again and it not have. I can't it, accept. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah, BS. And and they gotta have space battles. Okay, that was also a big missing thing. I pre-ordered this game. Oh, I'm. I so made a video. Sorry. I am. I made a so video sorry. thinking it was gonna be great. I am so sorry. I only bought this on like it was around Thanksgiving last year. I bought this, um, and it was because uh, you know I was like, okay, you know, get to you know hang out with the family. My old sister's coming back from law school. Gonna you know play it again. Um, who boy, what a mistake. I mean, I even made a video going why I think the new Battlefront will be amazing. Such a mistake. Such a mistake. Well, here's the thing. I can see how you were tricked, though, in that E3 gameplay, which we'll, we'll probably cover. Um, yeah. It, oh, I'm so excited for E3. So many cool things. I can't wait to see. Um, anyway, in that E3 demo thing that they were showing, it looked the, like the greatest thing ever, right? You see and the then dude we had run, like the beta. Yeah, it look you see the dude running around and he's and he's everything's blowing up and and then dude you see Darth Vader choking a dude and you're like, oh my gosh. And then your childhood like springs out of your heart and sings. And then you get the game and then it's like, okay, there's six. You know, and okay, here's another thing. There's like six heroes in this game. There should have been some more. And okay, we could go on. Minus we DLC. go for we could go for hours on that. The season freaking pass, man. What was it? Sixty dollars, fifty dollars, something like that. Forty dollars. I'm pretty sure. Is, is it forty dollars? I'm pretty sure it's fifty dollars. Forty or fifty. I'm pretty sure it's fifty dollars for DLC. Yeah, you know, I mean, I have my PlayStation up. I can check. <laughs> okay, okay, but I mean, that's just awful. That's just horrible. Right? I mean, who would who would ever do something like that? It I mean, is $50. Yep, okay. So, and and so I what there I think there's two heroes included in each DLC pack which you can buy separately. Uh, for uh the outer rim there's going to be two. Yeah, which there, is I know there's Naya and Nub, yeah. Um Best and also, it's going to have also, Lando and some other bounty hunter. But oh, this really? is where it gets confusing. Okay. The Go Death ahead. Star will have four heroes. Okay. Now, and okay. the special one that we don't know about yet will also have four heroes. Okay. That now here here's something I don't go. Okay, the first one that came out, the heroes are horrible. <laughs> okay, let's oh, just for a moment. Let's just think. Okay. To have, I'm sure there's some probably some casual, you know, like people who aren't very well versed in the Star Wars and stuff like that. Naya Nub and Greedo are in this DLC pack. Anyone know who that is? Just comment below if you if you just like without googling it or anything know who that is. Not because I want to test you or anything. I'm just curious because I really don't think anyone cares about those two characters, especially not me. Because like, okay, everybody why would you might get Greedo. Everybody might get Greedo. But Pro not Nyan probably Nub. because oh, definitely not Nyan Nub because his name's not even mentioned in the movie. You know, <laughs> you'd have to Google him to know. Um, but I mean, of course, people would probably remember Greedo because the the Han Solo scene. Um, but, dude, they're such lame Contra characters. First. Like, okay, okay. Naya Nub, nobody's ever heard of. Greedo gets killed in the very first movie in, like, one scene. The same scene he's introduced in. He dies. Why would anyone want to play as a loser like that? I mean, who who at EA... Oh, was, yeah, let's play the who, guy that gets shot first. Yeah, yeah. Who at EA was like, you know who people want to live out their their experience and then adventure as who greedo 
the famous rodent <laughs> bounty hunter named Dorito. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just and it's, and it's not a matter of gameplay or whatever. It's just that they're the the character is so pathetically worthless. Sorry if you're a Greedo fan, by the way, out there. Um, but he's, I mean, he's horrible. He didn't do anything. All his, his whole purpose was to show that Han Solo is cool. That's it. That was his goal for the movie. And you know what happened? He died. End of story, over. So what, I, I just, it's, it's, and horror, it's horrible. And also then they go, Okay, we're not going to include anything from any of the other movies, only the original trilogy. Now, as movies, the original trilogy are much better than the prequels. I'm about 95% of us would agree on that. Um, and it's fine if you're in the 5%. I you know? love the prequels, but the originals are better. Yeah. Um, I just but, remember the bounty hunter that's going to be in the Bespin DLC. His name is Gengar. He's the uh, bounty hunter with the cloth on his head. No one's ever... No one... Okay, okay. No one would know who that is. Okay? I don't even uh, know. You who. might. There was a Clone Wars TV show. Star Wars The Clone yeah, Wars. Yeah, I've, I've seen it, too. but I, I'm trying to remember. I can't. The cloth over his head. He was in there. I can't remember. He was on the uh, Vader's bridge along with Boba... LG88. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Okay, there was the there. Yeah, I remember the robot with the. I forgot what his name is. The the spinning eyes that. Uh, That's LG88. Okay, yeah, and then there's wh- which one was the uh, the lizard dude? Um, Bosk. Bosk. Yeah, I remember he was there. I can't remember. I think I kind of know who you're talking about, but he sounds horrible. Cause, why would I ever yeah, want right to right. play as that guy? You know what I mean? Like, picture. They just. I can't look at it. I'm currently in a in a thing. So that way, it's basically just a still oh. image for the the podcast. But so. Well, oh, well. Okay. Now here's the thing. Okay. Forgetting that the the original trilogy is better than the prequels. Why would they not go? Okay, there's some pretty cool characters in the prequels, like General Grievous, or um. Oh, yeah, Mace but they prequel. want to completely forget about the prequels for this version of the game. Why can you not play as Yoda? <laughs> I want to be a... Why not have Deku Barbara? Yeah, I mean, dude, there were so many things that they felt like they just half-baked. And this this game has been made for, like, what, three years? Since no. this game's been announced, no. came out, it was announced, what? When was it announced? I feel like it was... 2015, same year it came out. It wasn't announced then, no. No, they announced it yeah, a I'm while ago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure ago. it was. No, no, that was when the, the gameplay came out. They announced it like a... the I think it was about two years before the game came out. I don't know. That's the original Battlefront 3 that they were trying to make. No, no, no. You can look it up. Look, You can look up when EA was making their... Um, battlefront game when they they started on it it was because there was a really early early teaser trailer that they made in like 2014 at ea where it's like this at at walking through the snow and it steps down and then it has you see oh yeah Star Wars okay, battlefront. I know what you're talking about. yeah that yeah you remember that okay um okay let's move on from star wars battlefront i can't i can't i can't okay that. i'm just gonna do my rundown through it there's only there's a Poor amount of maps. Uh, the game modes are not even fun. The ones that are probably even worth it is Walker Assault and Heroes vs. Villains. There is no single player. The missions are utter crap. The heroes are pretty weak besides the three you get in the main game. No Galactic Conquest, no Space Battles. No Galactic Conquest, no Space Battles, even though you have a game mode called Fire Squadron, by the way, WTF, so that. Um, uh, oh. But I do admit it has great uh, colorblind support. Uh, the music like volume changer is not even there it's just whether you want the music off or on that's crap right there yep oh what else um, do i want to say um, um the star cards are pretty poor oh yeah i didn't i didn't even that that was kind of just I don't, I don't know um two other things uh more they needed more heroes did you mention that already i'm not sure if you mentioned that 
I um, said the heroes are pretty poor. The- okay, they could they could use they could they okay. There should not be all the heroes that are in those DLCs joke? should be in the full game. We have this joke where I live with all my friends. Mm-hmm. It's called EA. It's in the DLC. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really that's really good. Um, uh, what else? Oh, co- EA games. Co-op. It's in the DLC. Co-op mode is pretty poor, also, because the, uh, mostly because. Yep the game itself is poor you know because there's so few maps that balancing is horrible either in walker assault the rebels are going to win or the imperial is going to win you don't really have a like fair I fight I your team's ranking or your team's losing horribly i haven't played too much of the like multiplayer on ps4 but, but i do oh i'm up to like 50 something yeah i did play um the beta when it came out and dude i remember beta was terrific i remember you only won as imperials yeah ever. that's that's there was true. no hope for you if you were a rebel i mean i won once though i, I think i won once too but that's it i mean i mean there was i have a picture of it i even posted a comment <laughs> posted saying a this will be a day long remembered yeah. the one time the rebellion actually won in the beta yeah okay so let's move along from that so now Uncharted Four came out. Big, it did come out. What are, what is just a quick opinion of that? Because I I haven't gotten it. I don't plan on getting it, but I'm. You want me to give you footage of that to put over all this? Oh no, it's it's fine. Just just give a little you know brief your opinions on it because I'm curious. Uh, I how I does, think it's rather terrific. The multiplayer is pretty good. How does it hold up at, at least like single player wise to the other Uncharted games? Well, look at the Metacritic score and every other score. It holds up rather well. The story is extremely long compared to the other ones, only because they were on the PS3 system. There's up to at least 23 chapters, including the epilogue. Okay. Uh, while the others probably had like 12 or 13, I don't know, by heart. But they were pretty short compared to this one. Uh, the gunplay was better than every other Uncharted game. The story was great. You have multiple locations to visit. Uh, but you do less gunfighting in this one compared to the other ones. Okay. This is it... one you do a little bit more puzzle solving. All right. Would you say it's more comparable to like a Tomb Raider game now? Like it's more similar to like a Tomb Raider game? Uh, they no, were, I wouldn't were... even compare it to Tomb Raider anymore. I would compare it even more to Indiana Jones compared to what it was compared back then to. All right. All right. Like everybody calls Nathan Drake Indiana Jones. Then, but, yeah. Maybe not so much. Now it's become a little bit more to Indiana Jones. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay. So, the the meat of the episode I wanted to be would be um, uh, talking a little bit. I wanted to talk some about Civil War, and uh, maybe we can touch on some of the the superhero television since it's wrapping up soon, um, for the season. How long have we been at this? Oh the season i thought you said the uh and i thought you meant the podcast no 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 no, no. um i'm like what have i been at this for like what near to 20 minutes yeah okay so first of all civil war what were your just quick opinions on it just good just let, let's say this okay was it good or bad just good or bad yes or no answer on the holy grail of the marvel cinematic universe i completely agree um okay so now that we're on the same page all right let's just now here's the thing, okay? I want to talk just about the the few issues that you and I may. I'm not sure if you had too many issues with it. Um, the few issues I had with the movie, there weren't. Ma- of course, there weren't many, um, but they were there, and I just wanted to discuss them a little bit. So, um, and then we'll get into the good stuff because I don't want to. I would like to end talking about Civil War with the good stuff because there is a lot of good stuff. Um, okay, first thing. Um, the villain's horrible in this movie. Oh, spoilers, by the way. Spoilers, let's just say that. Because this movie's been out for a week, so go see it. <laughs> um, uh, trust me. If, if everybody that wanted to go see it has probably already seen it already. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the villain in this movie, I did not like. Okay? Oh, Zemo? Yeah, Zemo. Because here's the thing, right? I don't know a, I don't know a huge amount of, about Baron Zemo, but I do know he's a pretty crazy dude. Okay, he he he's 
he he was the he was the guy who became the leader of Hydra right after Red Skull, correct? After Red uh, Skull, I, like I'm not really I into think... like the comic area of Marvel. I'm more yeah. of a DC Comics person. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. yeah. I do know he is associated with Hydra. Yeah, I know he was the leader of Hydra at some point, but I do know he's a pretty crazy dude, and he will he was wreck one of some Cap's people. Villains during World War Two. Yeah, I know he was, and he was a big villain. He was like a major one, you know, like Red Skull level villain. Um, and in this, he was kind of a loser. I mean, I don't want to say that he wasn't smart, but he was. They didn't need him in like for instance i don't see why they use the name zemo for him and couldn't just say he's just some random dude you know there was no need for him to be zemo you know because it's like full name like baron von zemo yeah because he doesn't have he doesn't have any any anything that looks like the costume or i mean there's nothing else to identify him you know he's just a guy yeah for i mean he really is just a normal person Who's out for revenge? Like, like you do, been, like person that lost some, like his whole yeah. entire family during either the Battle of New York or the attack of Sarko- Sarkovia. Uh, however, you say that, like, yeah. why can he not be someone like out for vengeance that just has like a lot of money? Yeah, why couldn't he just be a guy? You know, he didn't need to be a super villain because he wasn't a super. This could villain have been like an movie. exclusive villain for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, although I'm glad that he didn't die. Cause then he they may oh, yeah, they may be able to, for him to be back. yeah because then maybe they could do something with him in the future um maybe he'll be like a part of like a you know like an anti Avengers team at some point and be like the leader of that because he proves to be a smart guy because he infiltrates that whole is it shield anymore is that was that even that wasn't a shield building was it it was like a no. U S government normal military building. That was probably like a United Nations yeah, building. Yeah, bring Shield back. <laughs> just make Shield, Shield is this thing. back. Well, y- yes, right. but you know what I mean. Like they need to give them a give them a heli- You know, give them all the stuff again. Okay, make them well, back they where they were. Well, give them a They just don't ever use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you continue to watch Agents of Shield or? Not recently. No. I mean, either. I'd say the episode like stopped off was when. Uh, this group blew up like a building, like completely annihilated, like black hole style. Okay, I think I saw before that. Um, I stopped around when they found out that the the doctor guy was the alien thing that had been killing everyone. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking yeah. about. And that's not a spoiler, by the way, because that was super vague. It's where if you only if you understood what had already happened, would you understand? any of what i said so i will say it's before the mid-season finale yeah um but okay so so villain is not very good um bring colson back to the big screen yeah yeah that, that would that would be i want to see stark's reaction he brought he he'd have the same look that when uh he grabbed bucky's gun when he shot him at his hand <laughs> and he goes Oh my gosh! What well, you just tried to get? You could have, dude. I love that reaction because it's like, I almost died. Like if this wasn't on my hand, I'd be dead. And he would be. How is Iron Man that died yet? He should have died dozens of times if you think about no, it. Because no, no, he's no. a normal human being. Oh, you remember Stanley Cameo? His name's not Tony Stark. His name's it's Tony. Tony Stank. Stank. Table for one, Mister Stank. <laughs> That that was that was great. Uh, I got a package here for Mr. Tony, Tony Stank. Stank. Stanley's wonderful. Bro, it's like I'm wonderful. never gonna let you live that down. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay. What else about the movie that wasn't amazing? Um uh, somebody should have died. Manipulated so easily. Wait, wait, get say that again. Tony like getting so upset. Like one person goes to you and says, Oh, their son died. Boo-hoo. Oh yeah, they, they were like that, massive that events. I kind of felt like someone was bound to die. Yeah, I kind of felt like okay. Here's here's something I didn't understand. Was the whole I kind of understand like the you know the United Nations being like, hey, you know maybe these Avengers they're not super safe. You know maybe we should do something about that. But but the Avengers thinking like okay, the thing that happened with the Scarlet Witch in uh where was that 
not Nicaragua. Cavia. No, no, no. In oh, uh, you mean the movie? Yeah, where Crossbones bl- blows up. That's I don't Nicaragua. Know that is. I think that's Nicaragua. Um, Probably is. So okay, when that happens, she saved a whole lot of people. If you look. There were people crowded okay, around their fight. Either ten people in this building, or a whole market full of people. Yeah, yeah, and Captain America and Scarlet Witch, superheroes that will save the world several times in the future. Although you know I will mean? admit, if she could lift them up, she can direct them a different direction. That is true, but they were close to that building. They were kind of close to the building, so I can understand why when she just lifted him up, she was like, "Okay, I got to get him as far away from the ground as possible." You know what I mean? So it was just because she was like freaking out and struggling with just not making it, letting it explode right there. So, so I kind of understand why she shot it straight up and then it hit the building. But okay, how many people were really but in that building? Straight up, she can lift it diagonally. True, but I don't know. I mean, I can see how you in the in the moment you wouldn't be thinking about it. Um. But, well, they're superheroes, according to the government. They should be able to think on yeah, their feet. They should be. Stop they should death. be totally perfect. Um, but yeah, man. Oh, uh, we're was... not appreciative of what you did at all. Yeah, I, okay, you guys are dude, criminals. That was, total, that was garbage. Where they were like, "Listen, we we owe you like everything. You saved the world like dozens of times." And then General Ross pulls up this powerpoint presentation of all the times that they've saved the world um and people start dying but it's like you have any idea how many people would have died if we hadn't done all that stuff like if we hadn't okay, thrown people into see. buildings stuff like that there the whole world would be that gone not our fault because that was external stuff from loki yeah uh let's see you have the washington attack that shields fall for not looking at the recruits more uh, what's the other one? Sokovia? Okay, the, that might okay. have been our fault. The person I understood the most for their reasoning was Vision. Because Vision was like, statistically, we do kind of cause some of this stuff to happen. So his reasoning made more sense. But like Iron Man's was just like, we got to be in check, Roger. So we can't just go around killing people and shooting stuff. Sometimes even if it saves the world. you your perfect teeth. And, and dude, here's the thing. I, I, was, I was nobody like, maybe... Captain America is right by saying, you know, what if we, you know, all of a sudden the government doesn't want us to go somewhere because, it's, you know, political reasons Corrupt. or something like that, and it's not right. What are we supposed to do then? They're kind of, they're all kind of just like one fire at a time, Steve. One fire at a time. And it's like, it's like no, I'm sorry, Tony. You can't put out this night. fire if you get into Fair the burning time. building. You know what I mean? Like, it was so. It wasn't very well thought not, out. Okay, people, people, we're not bashing on the movie. No, we're just bashing on no. Tony's reasons. This is this is basically just a. But then to, again, the Civil War kind of like Tony is, had poor reasons as well. That's true, but this is basically just like um, Republicans versus Democrats in many ways. <laughs> Less government from get me out of politics. No, get me out of here. Yep. Okay. Okay. No, we're, we're not going into politics and all of that. That's gonna just bring up a storm that I don't want to deal with right now. Um, Oh, I, I did understand Spider Man's reason though, because if a superhero he shows up paid. to your house, he got paid. Did he get like, paid? Hey, I'm Tony Stark. Hey, I'm I'm gonna give you some stuff. I'm gonna give you your nice new web shooter, so you can have that nice ending credit <laughs> scene. Yeah. I'm gonna give you your new suit and everything instead of this garbage well, getup. I can these ones you have in your attic. Yeah. Well, I can I can also understand though the reason because, okay, if you're a, if you're a if you're a high school kid. And a superhero shows up to your house, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to help me?" No, what human being is gonna be like? No. His I got, first reaction I was get... like, "Hey, Aunt May, we have a sick ride hanging outside our apartment." <laughs> oh God, it's Tony Stark. Oh, the, the the funniest part though was when he's like, "Why can't you come?" And he's like, "I I, I got homework." <laughs> and it's such a he. By the way, Tom, what's his name? Tom, uh, hit. It's not hit. Is it Hiddleton? Hiddleston? It, it might be Hiddleston, something, something like that. That might be Loki. That might be the actor plays Loki though, because they both are named Tom. Um, he was fantastic in this movie as Spider Man, because he killed it in every way. He killed it because he was so. Hey, you have a metal arm. That's so cool. That was, dude. That was awesome because Tom like, Holland. 
Tom Holland. That's right. That's right. Tom Holland. Um, he had he was he was the only person in this movie who you're like this is a genuine human being this is not like a superhero or a character this is just a person you know like this is how a human being would react if just thrown into all this stuff he'd be like oh man i freaking fight superheroes and i'm with iron man and so cool hey yeah. He's not a giant man right there. If you, if you've seen this movie, it's kind of retro. It's from the seventies. It's called The that Empire was, Strikes Back. That was great. What is what is what is Iron Man? It's like I, uh, Rhodey's like, how old is kid? like? War Machine's like, like she got this kid off. And and Iron Man's like, I didn't carbon date him. And, dude, that was. He's like, wait a minute, this kid's on to something. Yeah, yeah, because that was so okay. cool that they did that like that. He was I think like, he was like the line launcher, and they were like the. Uh, thing that knocked him down okay one more bad thing i want to go over and then we can get into all the good stuff because there's a lot of good stuff to go over um uh somebody should have died okay someone war machine was available for that yeah Uh, he could he could have died and i think everybody would have been like oh man now i see why tony stark's mad you know what i mean like it gives reason it gives purpose because especially at the end where he's and i can kind of understand why why tony stark wanted to kill winter soldier but at the same time you're just like man the first just reason no it. second reason yes i can see why oh yeah, yeah. the second him. reason when he finds second. out that winter soldier killed his parents i can see like in the that moment, was brutal i was sitting in my chair dude, going like <laughs> dude because here's the thing at the very beginning of the movie when when you, you see you know winter soldier goes and steals some chemicals and you don't know what it the is. Blood, the blood. Captain America's blood. Is that is it Captain America's blood? Is that all it is? Yeah, that's what made the other people super okay. soldier. Then why is it blue? It's in the bag. <laughs> is the okay, I thought I thought the bag is I thought, blue. I thought it was blue for some reason. Maybe I was wrong. Anyway, um And no, it's Cree blood. <laughs> okay. Um I think that's how you but, say their name, the Cree. Cree, yeah, the Cree. Is yeah. it actually Cree blood? Yeah, it's cre- no, it's not cream blood. Okay, well, I couldn't tell if you were joking or if like you were serious. Is it that's actually it's actually cream blood? Um, but okay, so in the beginning, no, that would be like a darker shade of blue. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so anyway, in the beginning when I, when they first show Winter Soldier knocking the car off the road and then taking the blood, we'll just say the 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 stuff. Okay. <laughs> um. Cap's blood. Cap's blood. When they take Cap's blood, when he takes Cap's blood, I was thinking, whose car is that? Because who is it that's carrying this Captain America's blood in the back of their car? Yeah, but in the defense of everybody else, the first time you see it, you don't know what he took. That's that's true. That's well, true. You know, it's like but, it's like a couple of bags. But you know, it's important. You know, it's something that Hydra wants because Hydra. Oh, tells him okay, my one complaint, my one small complaint was the code they used to wake up the Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, it's a bunch of there random was words. one word in there. No, no, no. The one problem I had was one of those words. You know what one of those words were? What? Homecoming. I think I remember that actually, yeah. Because that's the it, new Spider-Man I'm like, title. great, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, the new title for the new, the title for the new Spider-Man movie. Um, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, so, okay. Someone should have died. Captain America probably should have died. And then Bucky should have probably become Captain America. And no. also, I mean, okay. No, I would have been done if really? Chris Evans gave up that role. But why? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you I make like him Steve Rogers' Captain America I li- versus I like, Bucky. I like him too. But keep in mind, when Infinity War happens, they can just bring him back to life, you know? They can just. I mean, uh, they it's can, no longer going to be called Infinity War. I heard that too because it's misleading. Um, I hope that me. I really hope that doesn't mean. Hey, it's not about the Infinity Gauntlet at all. We just didn't know what to call it. I will be. I was so like, upset. oh yeah, we got you hyped for multiple years. The name being named Infinity War. It's, also, it's we're just got, gonna take that away. It's gotta have be of all about Thanos and the infinity stones right it can't just not be about that now um but okay okay so let's just say it's about thanos and that you can then bring them back anyone who dies with the infinity god later on
okay. Yeah, you have, like, the reality stone, the time stone. Yeah, because all that stuff can bring people back from the dead. So, it would have been fine, really, if they killed Chris Evans, because he wouldn't appear till then, you know? The Captain America wouldn't appear till then, so... Yeah, but I like how Cap is now hiding in Wakanda. That was cool. That was very cool. But also the other No, thing the was... cool part about it was when they zoomed out and you saw that giant Oh, the giant panther. panther. That was sick. Yes. Because, dude, I was thinking, oh, this is cool now. Because now it's not just Captain America's all alone. He has, like, the oh, backing you know of an entire people, country. Like, I know you don't know much about the Black Panther, but you know those people in the movie that, like, stop uh, Black Widow from getting anywhere near him? Yeah, the, I know that those are like his royal guards who can murder they can tons kick, of people. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they like murder. They could probably be a match for the Black Widow. Probably Black Widow would probably win though, just because. Yeah. Just because of the fact that she's a care, a, like a main character, <laughs> no, not necessarily because she's better, but because. You know, For a second, I, I thought like... you were gonna say just because she's Scarlett Johansson. No, well, okay, that too. If you want to use that reason, um, but yeah, so you're not gonna put like a lot of fight into it because like it's a big actor. You don't want the actor to get hurt. No, I, I mean, I just think that's because it's Black Widow, and people are gonna be like, okay, let's make Black, Black Widow lose to these people. Because what I like so if much you... is that Spider Man tried to get Black Widow to say Moose and Squirrel. <laughs> Yeah, but like, um, wait, did he do that, or was that just something on the internet I saw? I think that was just something on the internet that you saw. No, I'm pretty sure he got either uh Bucky or Widow to say that. Like, he wanted them to say that. Okay, um, I don't remember. But like, if you notice though, Black Widow's never lost a fight before. You know it. There's, I don't think there's a single no. fight. She loses. Oh, she's like, are we still friends after this? Oh, that was that was cool. I thought that was funny. And then he says, and then Hawkeye says, depends on how hard you hit me. That was. And that like was, Scarlet Witch okay. comes in and goes, like, you were pulling your punches. Yeah, I gotta say, the like, comedy, dang, call the him comedy, out. The comedy in this movie is phenomenal. It blends action and comedy perfectly. Because oh my okay. god, my favorite part of the comedy movie, uh, this movie was when. Cap kissed the girl. I forget his. Uh, it's Agent something. Agent Carter. Agent thirteen. No, Agent Carter two point yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Agent thirteen. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think it's Agent thirteen technically. Anyway, go ahead. Like this. Yeah, it's Agent thirteen. It's like he kissed her, and all of a sudden you turn around and like uh. And Falcon yeah, and Bucky are in the car, and they're like nodding in approval. Yeah, that was, that was great because it's, it's the whole it's, theater burst out of laughter. I, I think it's good when a super movie, a superhero movie, has a mix of comedy with it because it helps you realize it keeps a self aware tone that this is all really crazy and dumb because it's superhero stuff, you know, <laughs> like like. I know people will argue, you know, the the DC universe it, in their movies, it, it's it's fine that they don't make jokes and stuff like that, but it, it very much takes itself to over seriously. It just kind of makes itself so. It it because there's no light hardness to it, you you you're like. I don't know. It, it doesn't feel right. You know what I mean. Like for like this. Marvel, their way to keep people still in is like the comedy. Yeah, because you're you have a dude which is a lot more easier to do it that way. Meanwhile, DC had like a more deeper thought about religion. Yeah, God. they they definitely had a lot darker themes, more heavy stuff, more uh, big, more up like that can like bigger topics, like really criticize like the way you think. Yeah, 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 and then and then stuff like um, it, it was you know like in Batman v Superman I was kind of going over like. Um. Uh, you know, do you take somebody out just because there's a potential they're gonna do something? You know, like, like, I mean, I suppose you can compare that to a couple. Chance he destroy us all. I'm going yeah. to take it. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you can compare that to a couple of things in in today's society that we, of course, won't get into because then that's another whole discussion. Um. Okay. Anyway, back to Civil War. I loved Paul Rudd as Ant Man in this movie. He was phenomenal. Oh, Scott Lang. 
Yes, yes, phenomenal. Because he and Tom, what was it? Tom Hilton, correct? Tom Spider-Man? Holland. Tom Holland, that's right. Tom Tom Holland. They, sorry if I keep messing up his name. They were perfect. Fine. They were great. I mean, because do Paul Rudd as Ant Man? When okay, when 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 the f- initial fight at the airport begins, and Spider and and Spider Man pulls Captain America's shield away and grabs it, and he's like, "Hello, Captain. Hi, everybody. I'm I'm Spider Man." <laughs> and and then the fight's about to begin, and, you're, and Captain America. You know, Captain America has people. You just don't know where they are. And then um. And then Captain Captain America is all alone, and then Ant Man's on his shield, and then he like backflip kicks Spider Man, jumps over to lands on over by Captain America and is like Captain your shield, and then just gives it back to him, and you're, and then everybody else comes out, and then it's just it's just, it's just he, he is he is a great Ant Man, because the part where he's he's in Iron Man's suit and he's running around and uh, and. <laughs> So it's talking. I like Tony's way of like and, getting it out. Yeah, and, and Tony is so dude. That would be so weird. It's I love how weird the Marvel universe has gotten. You know, from very I like, I like the re- how like Tony got him out of his suits. Like, oh yeah, the it's, fire like, it's basically system. yeah, it's basically just fire extinguishers in his suit that he just sprays Ant Man with. And then, oh, and then Ant Man inside of him is like, and then, well, Tony is asking who, who's, who's speaking, and he says, "Your conscience. We haven't spoken in a while." And he's just unplugging stuff, and it's, it's amazing. And then, and then, of course, when he turns into Giant Man, is amazing. I was so happy when that happened because I knew when he, you know, he's talking about like, I may have something to help us. And then he's like messing with his, is a, uh, I've only done like this a, once in a lab. Yeah, in a lab. I passed out. Yeah, I passed out. Um, I, I was like, oh, he's going to turn into giant man. He's absolutely, he's going to turn into giant man. And then he turns into giant man. And do you kind of, it's amazing how you realize, because, because most people think, okay, if you're just a, you know, gigantic person, that's not much of a superpower. I mean, what can, what can you do with that? And then when when he does it though, you're like, wow. You can like, all and these like, people, or she like, was like, oh these, god, the like, man got big. Yeah, like all these people, you can just crush them. Like, like all these nor these people, it's like, wow, they're very small and very killable at this size. But the only the only downside like, is that he's slow. Like, oh, like, like if you looked at his hand. War Machine's leg only got to like his middle finger, probably. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, here's something I didn't understand. Why did Ant Man just throw him away? Like I would have grabbed him and just crushed him into the earth. You know, <laughs> like you're trying to. That would have killed him. Yeah, well, wouldn't have well, that. Okay, no, I would have him against like the airplane. Dude, okay, you're telling you're go. telling me that would have killed him, but falling from that huge height after being shot with a laser doesn't that doesn't kill him. I doubt that being crushed into the earth with a giant hand would kill you. Yeah, but that laser paralyzed him. That's true, but it didn't kill him. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Cat would have been okay if it paralyzed him, but didn't kill him. Um. So, so what? No, he's not Batman. He doesn't have like the thinking. Oh, you'll be fine. I didn't kill you, but you're. <laughs> I just be broke. I just broke all, all of your bones into dust. So it's not. So it's fine. Or or. Oh, as 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 Christian Bale once said, I don't have. I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you either. Fly away. <laughs> you remember that in Batman Begins, where he's on the train, Batman. and oh gosh, dude, I I know I know a lot of people love those movies, but I don't like them very much as Batman movies. I was born in the darkness. Who did buy it? <laughs> That's a good Bane voice, by the way. Um, that Bane voice is awful, by the way. Thank you. Uh, All right. <laughs> no, no, not yours. <laughs> not right. yours. I'm just saying the voice for Bane in the movie. Oh, I'm about, I was about to be me. No, 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 no. So yours bad. is, like, perfect. But I'm just saying he he should have had, like, a deep voice. Not like a, hello, Batman, I am Bane. I mean, like. That was like, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Okay, 
Civil War. Back to that. Um, Scarlet Witch was amazing also in this because her character was developed a lot more than in Age of Ultron, which I liked. Um, okay, her powers also, I appreciate they ex they explained a little bit more on how her powers work. They don't verbally ex explain it, but they show off, okay, what she does. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. she can mess with people's heads and she has telekinesis. That's it. It's basically it. Um, and dude, I gotta say, it was crazy when she like, shoots vision to the center of the earth i like literally it's like literally i mean like, literally to the center of the earth and all of a sudden, like he goes down because level after level after level after level yeah because i was thinking okay i was thinking okay so for him to get back there that means he has to he has to fly all the way back up there and they have to be completely gone and nowhere around the whole the whole base so that must have been the center of the earth, right? Because that was really that would have to be really, really far down. Because I mean, because he because he doesn't get fatigued, so he's not like, ow, ow. Okay, now I'm going back. Because he, I mean, he he can just be like, okay, fly up back now, you know. And so, I mean, it must that must have been the center of the earth. Oh, you know. what do you think of Chadwick Boseman's portrayal of the Black Panther? Beautiful. Great actor. Chadwick Boseman. I salute you. Amazing performance. Because um, cause, cause he, he does a good job. I don't feel like he was very flushed out, but I understand that because he was just introduced and, you know, they can't show off every character. But I feel like I'm, I'm interested to see the Black Panther movie now. Yeah, you know. they're gonna do T'Challa pretty well. Yeah, because I, I also feel like they did a good job showing him as, you know, he's not totally the king yet. You know, he's still learning. Cause the he, warrior. yeah, because he just goes off and is like, okay, I'm gonna avenge my dad by murdering this guy. I don't necessarily know if he did it yet, but you know what I mean. Which also, I felt like it was kind of weird that nobody was like trying to help. Bucky at all except Captain America and his you know his team I felt like Iron Man should have you know I don't know something like like they had like one video that I it didn't even even they show it it doesn't soup look a huge amount like Bucky anyway you know like they didn't look for any other possibilities nothing it's just like well okay actually you can see Bucky's face in it well, you can, but it's very, very, like, blurry and stuff, you know, because it's, like, in the middle of the night. Oh, the what killed me, though, is what he did to Tony's dad, though. That was brutal. Okay, that, okay, that, the, I gotta say, that was a very, very, very good um, plot twist. And very well done. Because then it immediately gives, because I, I didn't get, I didn't like the reason that Tony Stark had in the beginning like, to go hunt down. Tony looks stupid whatsoever. Yeah, but then like, at the, at the, the first end... One at the end you're like okay you should probably forgive him because he was like brainwashed that entire time but i can understand why you'd be really really mad and it, dude he goes and and here's the thing he has a great line too where 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 captain rick is trying to reason with him and he's like listen you know he was all brainwashed during that whole time okay and he's like i don't care he killed my mom and then he just starts and then he just starts fighting and it's 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 a great fight too between the three although of them. when you look back at it how they did it it's kind of predictable that he would be the one to kill him yeah because when you look back at it it's like you see like the transition where bucky steals and all suddenly you like see a younger version of tony stark talking to his dad and he goes this is how i wish it ended yeah yeah I uh, something interesting. But at though. first, it's like completely clueless. But now you can see what they were trying to reference at. Yeah, yeah. So when you watch watch it back, the whole thing sort of makes a little bit more sense, knowing that Winter Soldier killed his parents. Why he's? I heard every movie's better the second viewing. Yeah, I would I would disagree on every movie, but I would say there are many movies in which that Batman and Robin case. Uh, yes. Um. <laughs> um. What was I thinking? Cat oh yeah, so so Daredevil. okay. 
all of the above. Um, I, I did think, though, for sure, Captain America was going to die. Either Captain America or Winter Soldier was going to die, because there's a point in which Iron Man I is shooting a Tony laser. I thought Tony was going to die, but I forgot they, like... I, I was thinking at certain reactor. points he was going to die, but at the same time, you know, when Captain America is smashing his head in <laughs> with his shield, and then he pulls down... Do you know how much they paid Robert Downey Jr. for this movie? What is it, like... Wasn't five hundred million dollars? Was it? That's infinite. Four million. Four million dollars. Gosh. Um, four million. Four million. Um, but it, so when Captain America is smashing Iron like Man's head, Marvel in, people at Marvel were trying to be cheap, and like Disney was like, "Yeah, no, we need Robert Downey Jr. Pay him the money." Well, they kind of have to. I mean, they don't have much choice at this point, you know, unless they kill him, which is one reason why I said it might have been good. For someone to die, you know? Um, House of Mouse owns you. Remember that, Marvel. Yeah. Um, and Disney's okay. like, oh boy! Okay, anyway, anyway. When Captain America's smashing Iron Man's head in, and, you know, he has, and his helmet comes off, and then it's like, oh my gosh, he's gonna, he's gonna smash his actual face in. Um, I knew, you know, he wasn't gonna do it. Because he was, because he waited a couple seconds, you know what I mean? It was like, hmm. eh, into the into the arc reactor um i did think that that iron man was a total wimp when he went you don't deserve that shield my father made it and then he like drops it and then it's like why you know what i mean like it's it's kind of okay i'm gonna go back to agents of shield real quickly okay. you know what was stupid that i saw on my twitter what apparently they're talking about who's gonna die in this season and you know what colson has what a hologram shield. Why? Instead of the star in the middle, it's the shield symbol. That's weird. <laughs> That's I'm like, well, why weird. would you own this? That's very, very Two weird. Seconds. Um. Anyway, for the the viewing audience. Um. Okay, so. I get it. So that the whole scene, somebody I think definitely should have died. And especially there's one point in which Iron Man actually lasers a point of the roof. Like a, it's like a, like a corner of the roof where a Winter Soldier is lying down. I think it's after he's, he has his arm blown off. And I thought for sure at that point, you know, oh, the, the roof's going to collapse on top, of, on top of Winter Soldier and then he's going to die. You know, that would have been an easy way to do it. Um, or when I don't think they would have actually like bashed Iron Man's face in like that and killed him. Um But I I do feel like it would have been better if somebody had died, because then it would have added stakes and currently after viewing this movie, there is no repercussions that come from It's this a movie. Marvel nothing, movie. Yeah, well nothing happens at the end is the thing. Nothing has changed except Iron Man Again, it's a Marvel movie. Are, yeah, but you know what? But like they um, repeat the same pattern. They know it's going to work because it sells millions. Yeah, yeah. Um, which at least kudos to Batman v Superman for at least you know doing something weird and new, especially with stuff like Suicide Squad, which is basically their Guardians of the Galaxy in many ways. Um, but I'm very interested to see Guardians it. Of the Galaxy Two. Yeah. Um, what else about the movie was? Was was very excellent. All the acting I thought was excellent. Um, I thought like Steve's like that one scene where like you figure out like Peggy Carter died. Oh yeah, that was sad. I, although I here's the thing: Captain America's reasons for uh, for fighting this whole uh, uh, UN treaty Avengers thing. I forgot what it was called. Um, but. I felt like his Toby reasons Ar made perfect right. sense. You know what I mean? Covia like, Accords. Covia Accords. Um, uh, I felt like his reasons made perfect sense. Because, you know, after the stuff that happens at Peggy Carter's funeral, it felt like, yes, you have perfect reasoning to do this, you know? Because you feel, you know, like it's, it's not cool for the government or any government to just be able to say, okay, you're going to go save the world here, but not here. You know? 
You know what makes so, me really upset? What? Because Peggy Carter literally died in the movie, but yet she's also figuratively died in the real world because her show ended. Oh, did it? I didn't know that. Yes, it's not getting renewed at all. Hmm. That's like interesting. God dang it. What, I actually was... like the show. Yeah. There's something. What were we gonna else were we gonna talk about? We were gonna talk about something else. Oh yeah, the the current uh, superhero television that's ending. Um, let's just give a brief overview. I think Arrow is very weird right now. I also think Flash is very weird right now. That's not to say that the no. one of them is bad. Um, Refuse. Uh, I will not watch Supergirl, despite the fact that it is on CW. Um, I'll wait until it moves to the CW. Okay, I don't like Supergirl as a character, to be honest, because it's it's it's. Why can't you just? I watch... literally have not watched Supergirl since the pilot. Episode. I haven't watched like any of it, dude. Because I was because here's the thing I have with Supergirl, right? I've spoken to dozens of people on this, and they all basically agree that Actually, Superman. Wait a minute, is, I lied. Superman is better than Supergirl, and I've spoken to okay, female and male about this. Okay, <laughs> so. Don't think like. Want, go want, ahead. I want to admit I lied when I said I hadn't seen it since the pilot. I lied. Okay. I did see it one other time. Okay. But in I my defense, the you. Flash was on it. Yeah. Um. But you you know what I mean though is that Superman's better than Supergirl, right? Mm -hmm. Just in general, I mean. Like, no, 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 like male supremacy thing. Yeah, like, but even like, I, I've, I've talked to like female people about this. I just think Superman's character is built better. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I've talked to, like I said, Super I've talked Girl to male and female people about this, guys and girls, and they all seem to agree Superman is just better than Supergirl because he's a more developed, and Supergirl isn't as powerful as Superman. So, and you know what? I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there could very well be a feminist right now watching this stalking this video it's like the war machine like thing. That. we don't think like, war machines well developed and, and... yeah but that doesn't mean oh gosh because he's small. black you know it's it's because yeah there's some people literally on the internet that's looking for excuses to protect their favorite thing yeah yeah i i mean it, it's 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 dumb just just accept that stuff can be bad and it's not because of some terrible reason like racism or sexism or, or anything like that some people are just not written well and those are I will say Rhodey has been much more written is very well written in Civil War Tony Stank oh yeah compared to <laughs> no. two and three yeah um okay now uh yes Supergirl never gonna watch it um Flash I'll probably watch it when it gets moved Flash and this is by the way if you're not totally caught up on uh Flash yet then you know you might want to not i wouldn't even say you were totally caught up oh i i'm i'm caught up now i'm totally caught up now i am one episode what do you behind mean? You on saw tonight's episode oh i actually haven't seen tonight's episode no i forgot that a new episode came on tonight okay i must say you are not caught up okay never mind um but okay i for the flash the fact that he was in the speed force and that sort of stuff. And the fact that Zoom gets his speed at all should not have been a thing because it was so easy for the Flash okay, to... Okay, I'm just going to say one thing about tonight's episode because it was like at the very beginning of the show. They were talking like how Barry is a little too reckless because he thinks the speed force is with them. Uh, of course. Well, yeah, because he, he settled all his problems. His mom loves him. Yeah, the Speed Force said he was his favorite the person. Speed, the Speed Force. Okay, dude, I, I was like, what the heck is the Speed Force in this? Because it's like the afterlife and the stuff he gets his speed from. Because he's because his mom shows up, and it's not really his mom. But then I wouldn't it's call like, it the afterlife. What I call it the middle ground. The, middle the limbo ground. area. Dude, I, that's, that's freaking dumb, you know that? <laughs> Sounds, I'm sorry. Like, I sounds like you're making excuses. Twilight Zone. Sounds like Twilight. you're making excuses for the show. Um, but yeah, okay. 
That's all I'll say about the Flash. I never said I liked the middle ground yeah. or Limbo. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was weird, like, how he can jump from two places in, like, a few seconds. Yeah. Um, Arrow is weirder. Ah, is weirder. Oh, with the Damien Dark uh, thing. Yeah, okay, that's weird. Um, uh, spoiler alert, Black Canary dying. Okay, I don't understand why. Okay, you made a video about this, by the way. Um, that was the flash. I don't, zoom I don't, is lower. I don't see what the big deal is on Laurel dying. Okay, because so a lot. Oh, of I didn't were, complain about that. Oh, did you not? I thought you, I thought you in one of your videos. I thought I like compl- like said like oh great the show's getting worse. Laurel's dying. Well, okay, Laurel okay. Died, I, I took uh, that as though you the magic thing. I took that as though you did not like the fact that Laurel died. Correct. Oh, I didn't care at all. Okay, I didn't care. Because here's the thing. I was just like... I just thought, like, oh, uh, great. They just removed one of their main characters. That's just... That's yeah, how you know the show's yeah. dying. They had to make a budget cut. Well, okay. So the way I saw it was that... I don't I don't necessarily know if it's a budget cut or not. Or if they just wanted a... I, I don't know. But, um... Not to say I, I hate, like, the person that plays Arrow. I think it's Stefan Amell. I yeah, don't Steve hate him. Amell. I actually like his version of Arrow. Yeah, I, I think he's I think he's a great Arrow. Definitely. Um, I just think they should be gone with the magic. Yeah, I, it, the ma- and and then when they they show Constantine in it, but then there's a whole lot of stuff that like Constantine should have shown back up for, and they just kind of make excuses as to why he doesn't show back up. He's like, like the Constantine he's show busy. last season died. That was so horrible, by the way. One. Constantine was horrible, by the way. I think everyone agreed. I never Constantine. saw it. dude. I watched it. Okay, it was just so. Here's here's the problem with Constantine, right? Just. The only good thing I saw general. about it was the Dr. Fate helmet. Yeah, I wanted Dr. Fate to be in that show. But so the problem with with Constantine was that So you ever seen a you ever seen a movie or a show where the character is such an unlikable human being and he's just like a horrible person and you cannot get behind him because he's just a constant dirtbag to everything everyone and everything. You know what I mean by that? I think I've seen something like that, but I don't remember its name. Okay. He's that guy. He's just that. And here's the thing, okay? Most of the characters, you know, in a, in a TV show or movie, usually the character starts out as a bad person, and over the over time they evolve and change and become a better person, right? It's usually how plot works. Mm-hmm. The character evolves. In this, he's just like... I'm just oh, a screwed. bad person. That's basic. I mean, that's basically what it is. He's just like, forget this stuff. I can't be good. Who cares? I'm just gonna be bad. Ebenezer um, Scrooge is a good example of that. Yes, yes, he is Ebenezer Scrooge of the of the DC universe. But I mean, that was that was his biggest problem to me was just because how unlikable he was. Now, it doesn't that's not to say the actor was not good. He just felt so. So, like, you're just like, can't you just be nicer? <laughs> like, can't you just be a bit nicer to people? Because he felt just so, like, sad, and you kind of understood why he was sad, but it's like, still, you're a horrible human being to everyone you meet. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, and then he did not, he was not, and I get that he's not like a, you know, like, a Doctor Strange kind of sorcerer where it's like shooting lasers out of your hands and stuff like that, but he didn't really do any ma- much as much All magical. Anybody. Yeah, well, he didn't he didn't do much cool magic stuff. It wasn't like, you know, spell casting. It was like, okay, let's perform this exorcism or ritual or whatever. It was like soup it was like um like like supernatural, you know. Like on supernatural, they don't like shoot lasers out of their hands but they got some like some magic stuff i don't watch supernatural okay well it i'm, I'm sorry but i know what you it's, were i know what you were meaning yeah yeah it, it's it's I've not, seen i like i like i was at like i had to go with my family somewhere and that was the only thing on tv and yeah. i saw a woman's eyes get born burned out of her head yeah i was like oh my god supernatural is a weird show too it's very weird it's like why yeah um Burned out of her head. Like why? 
They like literally I'm melted not, like candle wax. I'm not totally caught up to date on Gotham yet either, but Gotham is oh, weird. Oh yeah, I, okay. I got caught up okay. to date. I like stopped after the Riddler episode. I just want to say Gotham should not be a thing. I don't like Gotham. Well, okay, here's, here's like I like it as like, I like it as a crime TV show though. Yeah, but but here's the thing, all right? Just show. Why can't it not be like Batman. the Dragnet, where you don't why even have Bruce Wayne? Or why? Why can't it be like this? Why can't it be a show where he's like seventeen and you see him actually traveling the world and learning to be Batman? Oh, that would be cool. That would be cool, right? Where it's like he, every episode he's training with someone and. You know, it, it's like every, like you would every... have to go around the world to learn from the best like drivers, yeah. pilots, because not, not a lot of people realize this. He went to way more people than a ninja school. You know, he went. He, I mean, he met with he met with Zatanna's dad to learn how to get out of um, magic. I'm uh, not magic stuff, but like uh, uh, he learned how to like lock, like get out of traps, basically. Um, and stuff like that, where it's like it's it's like really cool stuff, and they never show that in the movies, do they? They always just show the ninja school where he learns to be a ninja. I don't think. Yeah, that's right. His name was Zatara. I don't think he even know even went like in the comics anyway. Just most of the time, ever went to a ninja school, right? It was just like he went. No, to I'm pretty several... sure he did. No, 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 but like he didn't go to one place to Not learn like all one of that. Main one, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like he went to several different. Like okay, I'm gonna learn this martial art and this martial art. It wasn't like okay, come here and we'll teach you how to be Batman. It was never like that. You know, it wasn't like okay, here's the Batman school. It was always like okay, you gotta go here, you gotta go here, because he learns how to like race cars and, and he learns how to you know be stealthy and. Then how to, uh, he, he does a lot of like bat kung fu too, where it's like put a blindfold over your eyes and then fight kung fu and then don't lose, um, which is it, it's which is very weird, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I want to show like that. Okay, another thing though, um, did you hear about the Krypton show being made? No, don't even let this happen. <laughs> Okay, I was thinking about that, all right. You don't know what the biggest problem with that idea is. Everyone on Krypton dies except Superman and Supergirl. Um, You're going to get so Zod. attached to these characters that the last season is going to blow all, up. They'll all die. What is the point? Why should any of it matter? I mean, what? Okay, okay. And, and if somebody wants to say, what's to provide backstory so you can understand more of the Superman story? Why do I care about what Superman... It's not even Superman's parents, Superman's grandparents. Why do I care about what Superman's grandparents did? Like, what? The Kryptonian Civil War? Who cares? It, it got blown up anyway, you know? It's, it's, it's just... It's a horrible, horrible idea. In every way. <sighs> It tires me just to think about it. Um, like, let's follow the exploits of the scientist family member of Superman's great yeah. grand. Yes, let's do that. That sounds genius. How about instead, let's not do his father. I, I let's question. not do his uncle. We're going to do his great grandfather. Why, why can people just not make straight up superhero shows? Like, okay, why can't Gotham just be like Batman, the TV show? Just I don't I don't care about all the other like well we gotta make sure we keep the rights and so that people are only familiar with this version of Batman I don't care just make a Batman TV show somebody just do it I feel like Gotham's the reason we have bunny ear Batman <laughs> what when um the that Mad is Hatter. one reason why I hate the show was there a when was there a bunny ear Batman on Mecha Gotham? Batman the Gordon Batman. Oh yeah, you don't read the I, comics, do you? No, no, no. I, I have, I have for a long time. On like, just when the um, the Joker had returned, was when I stopped actually. But uh, I did know, I did know that when they rebooted it for what the second time after the new fifty two, they rebooted it again after the new fifty two, and then no, that was still within the new fifty two. Is it? I don't even care. Um. <laughs> And then Jim Gordon was Batman, which is weird. 
and he's like a cop, right? He's like a cop, super mecha robot Batman. Who just who comes up with all this stuff? I feel like there's some people who just like come up with these weird, dumb ideas for like stuff to put in movies and and comic books and everything and TV and just. Just like like okay, people you wonder want, okay. why I hate the DC, the New Fifty Two. Like okay, give me some of the old DC comics. Their yeah. stories are better. Oh, like um, Bad Dark, Hush, Dark Knight Rise. Right? Hush Joke. is great. Uh, Killing Joke also great. Dark Knight Returns. One of the only good ones from the New Fifty Two is probably the Court of Owls. That is true. That is really good. That is really. Good. Oh well. Um, what is it? Death of the Family. Where the Joker's face is cut off, that's good. That's okay, but I don't that like that. Good, that was pretty good. I liked it, the Joker's face being cut off. It was creepy. It was super, super creepy. But I will. And say they literally this, make masks for that. You know that, right? Do they make like real masks for that? That's weird. Yes, that's you weird. have like the skin, and then you have like oh. the face. Um. Okay. And but you but, also do have a Court of Owls mask. But in in that in that in the death of the family though, um, I thought that was good though because it, it 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 messed with Batman's head a whole lot on like a totally in a, on a much higher level, you know, because it, it messed with everyone that Batman knew, and especially that final you know the final issue where they're all at the dinner table and they all have bandages on their face, you know, and and Batman's and the Joker's made Batman think that he might have cut off all their faces, which. You know, like like you kind of think, you kind of realize, okay, there's no way. He oh yeah, that was sick. You knew, you knew from the kind of beginning, like there's no way he cut off all their faces. But then you're kind of like, oh my gosh. The moment when he lays down the coolers on the table, I'm like, oh god, he did. And then you have what is it? He it's like it's under like a dish, right? Like a serving tray. That, like, yes. And there's like flies all around the serving tray, and you're like, oh my gosh. Did he actually just? Did he for? Because because you're like I will admit the Nipper Two Joker is pretty creepy. He is really creepy, and they got some good writing in the in, in uh, for them too. Um, not as good as uh, who is it? There oh, I forgot. I can't rem- I can't remember his name. Who is it that wrote um, uh, Dark Knight Returns, and uh, he also wrote Batman Year One. Frank Frank, Frank Miller? Miller Frank Miller. That's it, right? Uh, he was really good. He wrote Batman really well, um, but yeah, dude, there's some really great classic Batman stories like Batman Year One, Killing Joke, Dark Knight Returns. Love Dark Knight Returns, by the way, which is why I was so sad to see Batman v Superman. Um, after no, 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 I like Ben Affleck Batman. I, I liked. I'd not say I didn't like him, but the way the movie went, I did not like the story. Is what I did not like. I thought that the acting from, and I thought Henry Cavill, other than the fact that he was not very happy, happy, um, I feel like he should have been a little bit, uh, yeah, maybe a little so bit happier. I even smile once forever. Yeah, um, I feel like there was like okay, have you ever seen like um, the Nostalgia Critic? Yes, yes, I have. They were like, why didn't why couldn't Superman just do the Christopher Reese thing, just spin around the world, Earth multiple? I don't think that's the Chris. Oh wait, never mind. That is Chris. Not nostalgia critic. Even though his one was really good, I'm thinking of how it should have ended. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Cartoon ones like he goes yes. back around time, spins around circles, and then he picks up the guy's wheelchair and chucks yes, it out the that window. Was, that was good, and and of course they've been you know ever since that movie came out, been trying to make it so that he never uses that again because everyone said, well, why doesn't he just run fly around the Earth really really fast and turn back time and just do it differently. Because if you have him be able to reverse time, every problem can be solved. He's overpowered. He can do anything then. I mean, he's already overpowered. Oh, he can he's basically... really going to kill me? Oh, he's destroyed this? Guess what? Reverse I mean, time. In those Christopher Reeves movies, he could do virtually anything. I mean, there wasn't anything he couldn't do. Because, like, in what? Superman 4, he has vision that lets him rebuild walls. <laughs> oh, that? don't mention that. Don't mention oh, that. Oh, yeah. It's worse than the time travel. And then there's a comic book where you know where he has the power to shoot a miniature version of himself out of his hand. You know what science says would have happened if he actually did that? What? 
We've we've all went in, we all all of us would have went flying off the earth. Really? Because the would the gravity have stopped because of the lack of rotation? No, because when you think about we we are moving with the earth, we are constantly moving at a completely rapid pace. Oh right! So if we just if we would stop, all suddenly it, inertia, stop it, it, it'd be like in a car. The inertia would just yes. cause you to go whoosh, and then <laughs> everything oh would go God. flying off. Dude. Just thinking about that, like a new walking down the street, like that, 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 ah, it just goes into space for no reason. Um, <laughs> that'd be that would be that would be just wonderful to see. Oh look, a penny! Ah, <laughs> ah. It's it's so weird though because we never think about stuff like that. You know, we never think oh, I'm moving with the earth. We think everything is still, and you know, of course, relative to us, everything's stationary um but yeah dude there there's, like, there's some great when someone asked me why can you not stand still i'm like why can you not stand still yeah <laughs> there's there's a but the, the there's so many good batman comic books that people should read um i haven't read uh what is it under the red hood i haven't read that before um, you at least seen the animated movie. I've seen the animated movie, yeah. The animated movie's good. Good. A lot of those animated movies are good. I'm very excited to see the Killing Joke animated movie. Oh yeah. my god. First R.A. movie. First thing you, I'm going to do it? is buy it. Here's the thing. I've heard a lot of people say the animation in that trailer doesn't look good at all. But I was kind of like, it looks kind of fine to me. You know? doesn't like it looks good yeah i was thinking looks good you know because it, it's not like it's and here's the, here's the, what i love most is who is it kevin conroy who plays plays voices, batman yeah voices batman i love him as batman he dude he is what i like whenever i think of batman it's like okay kevin conroy he has to sound just like kevin conroy he can't sound like okay. That's, that's why. What the Joker? Who I want to sound like Mark Campbell? Mark, absolutely, dude, dude. It's and I didn't realize till recently that Mark Hamill played the Joker in like everything animated and even some of most of the the Arkham games. Man, that must He's, have blown your mind. Yeah, dude. Because I'm like, you're telling me Luke Skywalker played the Joker. <laughs> um, but dude, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, nah, get out of here. You lying? Yeah, because. And they're amazing. I mean, they are phenomenal in those roles. And it is, especially, dude, because I think both of us, correct, watched the Batman animated series and Justice League, correct, as kids? Oh, I own the animated series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was like my whole, a, a huge chunk of my childhood, you know. Um, I've never seen any better writing besides the animated series. There's nothing to compare. Dude, it, it's 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 really phenomenal. Because here's the, here's the thing, to me, that was what Batman is. That's that he that's how he should act. That's how he should behave. Everything. That's that's how his voice should sound. His voice should not be. Where's the bomb? You know, like his voice should not. Where be is a, it? His voice should not be a caveman grunting. I don't you. know, Black Bob. Dude, okay, I will say Ben Affleck is the best Batman voice so far. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, live action. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, uh, of course, live action. Would probably be um, Michael I, Keaton. I don't I like know. Keaton. I don't know. George Clooney's pretty good too. <laughs> Said nobody ever. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. <laughs> Freeze. I'm and, Batman. Dude, I, I was funny. I was listening to somebody talk about that, and they were saying, you know, the way that Batman introduces himself in all four of the original first Batman movies, it's always very important how they introduce him because that sets the precedent, precedent of how their Batman's going to behave for the rest of the movie, you know. Um you know, it's Michael Keaton does it a certain way. Uh, uh, Val Kilmer does it a certain way. They all do it. They all have like, their own style of introducing it a certain I'm way. Batman. I'm Batman. You know, it's it's. They all got their own unique way of doing it. It's kind of like James Bond. You know, it's kind of like how when he does the the you know the um shooting and the blood drips down over the screen and it goes dun dun dun. So this one is the grapple. Um, just like that. 
yeah, it's well it, for in James Bond, you know, every James Bond does that pose and the shooting differently. It, it's all you know they they always do it differently and they all behave differently. It's 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 kind of like that, um, or how they say certain lines. You know, like the name's Bond, James Bond is is also where you can tell what kind of Bond they are going to be. So when James George Bond, so anyway, James Bond. that comp- the way that works with with Batman is similar to how he says, you know, I'm Batman. Um, but when George Clooney dude, I Batman introduces himself and he goes, Hi Freeze. I'm Batman. It's like, what the heck is this clown? And then, dude, oh my gosh, that movie. He he slides off a dinosaur's tail, and he has when ice skates. Dinosaurs in his, oh, the dude, ice I, I, say, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. It's ridiculous, but I love it just because of how goofy he is. And it's just, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. The Ice Age. I mean, it's... Oh, and then the Freeze Meister. <laughs> He's watching the movie. With his, oh, with my his, God. With his, get, with his gang. And, dude, his gang is just, like, suffering. He's a Mr. Tim. I'm Mr. Oh, Freeze Meister. I'm Whatever Mr. I touch. Yeah, dude. I love that movie, too. Those are good. The Santa Claus movies, those are good. Um, that was oh, also, my clutch. Those also bring back a lot of memories, dude. So many things bring back so many memories. But but Batman in that movie. That Great, movie. I got to listen to that. Oh, dude. I could, we could go on for hours just talking about that. Maybe we'll just go over it for a few minutes. <laughs> We've gone on for a <laughs> really long time. But but even so. Um, but, like, it's, it's just... I mean, it's horrible. His acting is horrible. Dude... The bat credit card. Oh my gosh! The I know bat. you were wanting to be the '60s, but the '60s would have even face palmed. Even yeah, even the '60s. I, here's the thing. Okay, I think Adam West was a good Batman. It was just the writing was not very. I'm Batman. Yeah, I think I think it was just that maybe Adam West was not in the right position at the right time for Batman. You know what I mean? Oh no, no, no! He was in the right position. He had no that, job. That that might have, that may be true. Maybe nobody else could have been that bad. But the him. only job he had recently before that was a Nestle Quick commercial. Ooh, um, that's literally so, the reason why you hired to be Batman. Yeah, but but so and you want to know how they picked Burt Ward? How? They literally had people come in for him. Burt Ward came in. He's like, oh my god, he actually looks like the comic book Robin. <laughs> it was even better the fact that he could do his own stunts. So that means okay, we don't need to pay for a stunt double. Let's just take some of that the, money the, back. The sixties Batman, while campy, does have I know a, a lot, lot about the sixties Batman. A lot of great. You, things you know to those it. scenes like from a distance where you see like Batman robbing the Batmobile? Yeah. Adam West is not in the Batmobile. I think I knew about that, yeah. Or um, Ward okay. was the only one in there. In one of those cuts he literally fell out of the Batmobile and broke his arm. Oh, wow. Okay, but... And he's like, no, no, I am not leaving until I do this right. But, dude, okay. Another thing that's really horrible in Batman, Batman and Robin is, of course, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. Because, just, wow. Oh, wow. I would have not said that now. I would have said Bane was the worst part. Oh, he's horrible too. He's literally just a. I mean, he, you could have you could have made a gorilla play Bane, and nobody would have known. Because he doesn't he doesn't ever say anything. He doesn't do anything. Bane's supposed he's to be just sm- there, and Bane's supposed to be smart. You know, like like okay, here's here's what's funny. Okay, the only two live action versions of Bane are Dark Knight Rises and Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. He's nothing uh. but a jacked up, steroid, taken. I mean, machine that grunts and screams at people, and just b- destroys everything. The and then, thing. and then, in Dark Knight thing. Rises, he's just this smart man who's strong for zero reason. He, he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't. He, there's no reason why he's strong. I go to shops. It's shops. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Batman just comes back it's because he has the willpower and he I beats don't know why, and, then he, and then he beats Batman beats Bane at the end for zero reason. Just because he has the will to win all of a sudden, you know? Like I but, wonder what would make first. Your yeah. spirit or your back. You you do a very good impression of Bane, I will say. That's very, very good. Yeah. Um, you know what it literally is? It's just me doing, ah, in this voice, and I put it in a cup. I I thought that you. it sounded like you were putting it in something, um, through something. I didn't know if it was like a Bane toy oh, no. or for something or something. For a second, I thought it was like a Bane toy. Literally a glass cup. Okay, that makes sense too. Um, what else is horrible about uh, Batman and Robin? everything the whole movie yep um batgirl like, okay i'm Bat- gonna tell you okay. something it's really horrific it's really horrific okay okay after seeing batman and robin right right on multiple occasions because it's so bad like throughout my life in high school one year you knew what happened what i took a drama class and we were watching a movie called the whiz okay uh, the Wiz is like, at first it was a play. It's like basically it's the black version of the Wizard of Oz. Okay. Which brings us to another topic about sexism and racism back there. I should have really brought that up then, but this feels more fitting. And immediately when I saw the director's name in the middle of class, I yelled. Why? Like, wait, what's wrong? I'm like, do you not see who's directing its movie? This is Joel Schumacher. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Can I leave this class? Can I go to the attendance office? Can I go to the counselor's office? I'm not sitting here watching this crap. Office. You need counseling after seeing Batman v Superman. Not Batman v Superman. Um, Batman and Superman. I mean, not Batman and Superman. <laughs> Batman and Robin. <laughs> um, okay, another. I can tell you one thing. The Wiz was probably just as bad. Oh really? I know. Okay, well, I was another... forced to sit down and take notes. Oh gosh, another horrible thing, dude, about Batman and Robin is Batgirl. Batgirl is awful. Who? If you ever get the chance, watch the Nostalgia Critics, uh, very like episode of it. He does it really well. Yeah, yeah, dude, the Nostalgia Critics is really good. Um, remember, so you don't have to. It's, dude, I I just hate. Back around that movie, cause she's why? Is oh, she I'm Barbara that? Pennyworth. Um, it's it's so awful. Uncle Alfred. I know, and 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 the how she gets the bad costume. She doesn't get any training or any idea of how to use any. It's like, of oh, stuff. hey, uh, Uncle Alfred, computerized version. Can I have a bat suit? Sure. And then, oh, that was that was dumb. Alfred's like, oh, don't worry. I've already prepared a suit for you. Because, you know, I just thought, you know, I probably should spend these millions just in case my, what is it, niece wants to <laughs> wants to be a superhero. Go kill herself? Yeah, go kill, <laughs> go kill herself. Just in case. And I don't like George Clooney at all, by the way. I don't care I don't like, how much my employer, like, I don't, I don't care if my employer does it. He pays me. I, don't, I, I can ignore these things. Dude, I, I just want to say, I don't like George Clooney at all, though. Like, as a human being. Like, every, as a real-life person and as an actor, I'm not a huge fan of him. As an actor, kind of, because of Ocean's Eleven, I thought he was good in that. But I don't, I mean, like, have you seen any of the stuff that he, he said before? I just, he... No, I've never seen okay. anything of George he's, Clooney after that movie. He, sa- <laughs> he says... He said some really weird stuff publicly that's kind of dumb and I disagree with. Um, oh, so basically he's pulling a Trump? No. The, like the opposite. I'm leaving politics. I'm leaving politics. No, no, no. no. He's actually saying like the opposite stuff. Like all, like, you know, of course, like all liberal democratic stuff. Um, well, that kind of gave away my political view, didn't it? <laughs> 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 oh man, I sure hate every man. I sure hate all that stuff George Clooney said. Um, 
but no, no, he said some like liberal democratic thing just to just to see what you know what he said. <laughs> Not to say that I don't like that sort of stuff. To say I don't like that sort of stuff, but but I do. Um, <laughs> You're trying to save yourself. No, dude. Listen, I don't listen. Here's the thing. Okay, did you see the video of um the? I'm, I don't think you've probably seen this, but it was a a, a panel that was happening at University of Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Um, where they had three people come on there. It's a really unique video, and if you don't get triggered every five minutes, you should absolutely watch it. Um, it had. Let me know if you've ever heard of any of these people. Milo Yiannopoulos, who's a gay conservative dude. Um, uh, what's her name? Christina Christina Summers, who's a feminist liberal Democrat. Um, and Stephen Crowder, who's a Christian Canadian conservative dude. Okay, so hey, give me a second. Oh, go ahead. For our go ahead. Teddy's audience, if you ever want to know his opinion, convince him to play Cards Against Humanities. Oh gosh, freaking garbage! <laughs> freaking garbage! I'm telling you. Um, so anyway, I'm trying to get him to play it. I, I will never play that game. I played it like once, and I'm like, oh, what? What sicko made this game? <laughs> um, okay, anyway, anyway, aside from Cards Against Humanity. So then, basically... Post the comments if you want to see it. Yeah. Um, these So these three panelists, you know, all are totally different, have totally different ideologies, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's the most diverse, in, at least intellectually, you know, ideolog ideologically, that you can get with people, right? You know, they should all disagree about on pretty much everything. Um, Milo Yiannopoulos, the gay conservative dude, gets up there. And so they make their opening statements, right? Um, and it's it's really interesting. I'll have to send you the video of this because it's really great. Um, so Milo Yiannopoulos gets up there, right? And his he pulls out his tablet. And he's like, all right, I just came here to, to say a few things. Pulls out a tablet, looks at it, and he goes, feminism is cancer thank you and then goes and sits back down his whole opening statement and then um uh christina summers who's the the feminist comes up there and 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 she's like well okay then and she gets up there and she says what milo meant to say was that th third way modern feminism is not cancer it's madness and so, and so he's, and so he's, she goes, she looks over and she says, that's what you meant, Milo, right? And he goes, no, I meant it's cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so then. No, I'm sorry. I was laughing at my own thing because okay. I was looking at cards against okay. humanity cards. I'm sorry, but that's why I offend people. But the question card is what gives me uncontrollable gas? <laughs> um, Okay. Are you paying attention, by the way, to anything that I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you were talking about my own nothing that said his own three statements. He just, like, leaped over his name. My own nothing. <laughs> You're like, my own nothing. <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. Okay, I didn't remember his name, okay? My own nothing. I, I, I only remember his first name is Milo. Okay, it's Milo Yiannopoulos. 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 Yiannopoulos, yes. Okay. Yiannopoulos, okay. So anyway, so then, you know, he says... But okay, can I continue with this? Okay, go ahead. He goes, yeah. what gets me uncontrollable can't... Uh, uncontro what gets me uncontrollable gas? You know what the answer is? What? Auschwitz. <laughs> <sighs> I'll never play that game. Um. So anyway, uh, so then... Oh my god! So then, dude. Okay. I'm sorry. You continue. Okay. So, so, so two of them have gone right. Okay, um, and then Christina Summers gives like some general, just like statistics and information about how everything that liberals believe is like wrong. Like, like she goes over. So, for instance, she's a feminist. Okay, and she doesn't believe in the pay gap. She doesn't believe in uh, what is it? <sighs> Rape culture. Um, I'm trying to think. I can't think of anything else. But 
so yeah, so so then, so you know, two of them already made their statements, okay? And then keep in mind, this dude's like this, you know, Christian Canadian conservative dude, right? He's pretty and, and he has a you know, he has like his own podcast, uh radio ish radio show ish kind of thing. Um and he you know, you think, okay, he's gonna get up there, talk about Jesus, and go back down quietly He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna say what he wants to say, and then get back down, dude. He, okay, he's also a comedian, by the way. Um, he gets up there. He doesn't go to the podium, by the way. He never goes to the podium, and he, I'm telling you, dude, he just starts ranting because the okay. So for the whole time that the the first two opening statements had happened, certain people, like a couple people, had left, and a couple other people had started yelling stuff at all of them to where they can't even speak, like, like. Dropping the f bomb at all of them, holding middle fingers up at them, saying it, screaming like hate speech. You can't have hate speech here, and and you know like all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so this dude gets up there and he just freaks out on all these people. I mean, he ne- and again he never goes to the podium. He's just walking back and forth, pacing, and just yelling. And he he literally even says. You have any idea how pathetic it must be to be you? Cause and I mean, dude, it was it was it was one of those things where you're like, man, I wish I could just get up there and just kinda like say everything. You know what I mean? Not thinking about like, oh gosh, what are people gonna think? Where you know, like just saying what you think, not trying to pander to people. Which in some ways I got I do on this and you do too, you know. We kind of pander to people because otherwise they're not gonna watch, you know. <laughs> um, not to say we don't do what we like, but I know I like playing video games. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying we do too. I'm just saying, you know, for instance, we wouldn't come out here and just start yapping about what our opinions are, which I'm kind of doing now. But you know what I mean. Yes, this has been the We're, first and only podcast I've been on so far. Yeah, well, um, but you know what I mean? Like, like for instance, especially on YouTube, YouTube's very liberal, you know? YouTube's very, um... I'm pretty sure YouTube doesn't want to have a political position in all this. I No, I, I, think, it, I think it does in some ways. I don't think... I think it instance, wants to be neutral. What, say that again? I think it wants to be neutral. Doesn't care what it's about. I think, I think that YouTube wants to let everybody say whatever they want, but I feel like first, like naturally, somehow, like liberal people. I think because they they feel like they can kind of. I think in any I, it's it's interesting because it's in you know like Hollywood too. Everything's more liberal, and I'm curious if there's like a scientific reason for that. You know, like when you have just a medium where you're creating entertainment. What the reason is that like liberal people are try- naturally attracted to that, you know. It's it, it would be an interesting subject to like research and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Like for instance, if we wanted to just start, you know, talking about whatever our opinions about stuff are, we'd probably have people not like that. You know, <laughs> people would probably get upset. Uh, as people do, because everybody's super sensitive now and can't take anything without being like, oh my gosh, you hurt me. I need therapy. You know what I mean? Okay, can I tell you something? The most embarrassing thing that happened to me recently. Yes. Does this have anything to do with what I've been talking about or just completely different? It's just completely random. Okay. Okay, I was helping a dude live stream. Mm-hmm. I'm only mentioning this because recently a lot of live streamers have done some pretty bad things, but this is not bad. This is just embarrassing. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was helping him. Out. We were playing Injustice. We were playing King of the Hill online. You know what happened? What? I fell asleep. <laughs> So you could fall asleep. So literally, you could hear me snoring. You could hear me snoring in the live stream. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and did he did he wake you up, or did you like did, for the whole night? Did you just? Sleep I right fell there? asleep and I woke up. 
I just slept right there. Oh my gosh, dude! I couldn't imagine. I've never done that because I've always been like, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> like if I'm really tired, I'm always like, I can't, I can't, I can't just, I can't just sleep in this chair. I gotta get up and go to, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> it's like five a.m. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I think I think we're done with the podcast at this point. We've gone for like over two hours, I think. So thank you no, all. No, I think it's a little bit less than two hours. It's probably it, like an hour, hour and thirty and minutes. Yeah, probably something like that. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. I am Tay Jenkins, George the Nerd. Oh wait, one more thing. Link in the description. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I I just remember this, but apparently there's been this debate on like uh, change dot org or something like that. They were wanting to remove the Washington's Post a review for Uncharted 4. Hmm. Why? They literally do, only because, like, the Washington Post is, like, the article you see there is completely biased. Yeah. Towards the hate of it, and it's the only one that actually hates it. Well, okay, here, here's the thing I don't like. Like, why do you care? It still has a great Metacritic review. Yeah, well, well here's something I don't get, okay? Why? Why are petitions a thing? Because nothing oh, ever happens. Oh, I can understand some petitions. The George Lucas directing episode what? Uh, Nine. Something like no. that. No. Yeah, but okay. You know what I mean? Petitions don't do anything. Because uh, WTFU was kind of a good thing. That wasn't necessary. But however, that was. What do you mean it wasn't necessary? I didn't say it wasn't necessary. No, but what I mean is um, that was being pushed because it had big YouTubers backing it. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, if somebody just goes, okay, I'm going to make a petition for, a, for a, you know, O.J. Simpson to be let go out of prison by, and pardoned by Obama. You know, it's like, No. You can't just why you know it's like it, wait it's, OJ Simpson's in prison. Yes, do you not know that? Are you wicked? I didn't really. I don't care about the news. Are you googling it? You should. The news is important. You'll be an adult one day, no, and you'll have to decide no, who's going to be the president. Me, okay. The last thing I turned on the news, I found people were complaining about the Confederate flag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. The last time I watched the news. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. Now goodbye. you see. What, now you see why I don't like liberal people. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's, it's a it has multiple meanings, and whether you like it or not, it's gonna be a historical it's book. A, so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a historical thing. Yeah. Okay. Podcast over. Link in the description for his channel. You make sure to do your part in making sure that this is spread and that people watch it. Goodbye. I'll share it. Goodbye.